Rosalia Che can spend 30 minutes grinding fresh ingredients to make a traditional Maya pork dish called cochinita pibil. She's one of the few chefs in Mexico who still cooks using one of the oldest forms of barbecue in the world, an underground oven called a bib. Maya people have prepared meals this way since at least 400 AD. But people have abandoned these cooking traditions, swapping bibs for modern stoves, fresh ingredients for pre-packaged sauces, and manual stone grinders for blenders. Yo no conozco qué es cocina moderna, qué es comida moderna. Lo que a mí me enseñaron mis abuelitos es lo que yo cocino. So what does it take to preserve an ancient cuisine? And can Rosalia convince others to do the same? We went to Mexico to see how the process of making this Maya dish is still standing. Maya people arrived in the Yucatan Peninsula around 2500 BC. By 250 AD, they had one of the most advanced civilizations in Mesoamerica. They were sophisticated farmers who used astronomy and calendars to guide their harvests. Many of their more than 40 cities featured massive buildings and temples made with stones. Today, the cities are in ruins, but over one million Maya people still live in the Yucatan, often in small towns near the historic sites. Rosalia lives in one of the group's oldest settlements in Mexico, Yashuna. She grows some of the most important ingredients for her cochinita pibil in her backyard. Si tengo el orégano, el achiote, la naranja. Achiote seeds are what give the dish its reddish orange color and slight peppery flavor. Maya people used it as food coloring, body paint, and even lipstick in ancient times. Rosalia grinds all the ingredients to make the recado or achote paste. She uses an ancient tool called a metate or ka in the Yucatec Mayan language. The recipe takes six different spices and she measures everything by hand as her mother taught her when she was a child. Ella siempre me ponía a moler el recado. Pues de ahí aprendí, vi cuánto ponía, cuántas cosas, todo lo que pone. Rosalia finishes the marinade with juice from a Seville orange, a fruit that grows throughout the Yucatán. It's more sour than limes and adds acidity. El jugo de naranja le puedo poner, si es mucha comida, le pongo tres naranjas. She massages the paste into the meat before adding it into a large metal pot. Le ponemos cebolla morada encima. Después lo cubrimos con unas hojas de plátano. La hoja de plátano se lo pongo es para que le dé sabor. In the Maya community, making cochinita vivil is a family affair. It's traditionally made for celebrations like weddings and birthdays. As the women marinate the meat, men prepare the underground oven called a bib. Rosalia's son starts a fire with wood from two native trees, the javin and the quitinche. They burn slowly and can withstand the high temperatures. He adds large rocks on top. These hold heat even after the fire goes out. It takes two hours for the oven to be ready. When it's time to add the pots, Rosalia makes sure to place them between the hot rocks to ensure the pork cooks from all sides. Her son covers the beef with more wood and banana trunks to stop debris from getting into the pots. He adds heat-resistant bags and soil. The pork cooks for three hours. The inside of the beep 
can reach up to 200 degrees Celsius. Outside the Yucatan Peninsula, conventional stoves and ovens have replaced the long process of peep cooking. But Rosalia says the flavor is worth the wait. Pero es más, tiene más sabor enterrarlo. Porque le aporta sabor como enterarlo como la, la tierra, como el tronco de plátano que le ponen. She raises her own Creole hairless pigs and keeps them on a strict diet of corn and ramon tree leaves. Las personas de acá o hasta los abuelitos, ellos no comen el otro cerdo. Dicen que no está bueno. The Maya made the earliest version of cochinita pibil with venison or wild boar. In the 16th century, Spaniards invading the Yucatan brought with them pigs and sour oranges, which quickly became staples of the dish. But their conquest also devastated indigenous communities there. An estimated 1.5 million Maya had died from disease and warfare by 1600, and the Spanish burned Maya religious books in an effort to force them into Christianity. Preparing traditional dishes like cochinita vivil was a way for Maya who survived to keep their heritage alive. It's one of the reasons Rosalia believes it's so important to share with others. In 2008, she opened her kitchen to chefs visiting the Yucatan. Corn is the basis of Maya cooking. In the Yucatan, people eat it daily in many forms. And it's the only ingredient in Rosalia's tortillas. Nuestra tortilla es nuestra cuchara, nuestro cuchillo, nuestro trenedor, todo. Y se puede convertir hasta nuestra servilleta. Soaking the corn kernels in lime water overnight helps to soften them. They wash them with fresh water for 20 minutes before bringing them to the mill for grinding. This used to be done completely by hand, but with the mill, she can do it three times as fast. She's been making tortillas since she was eight years old. Porque desde pequeña nos decía mi mamá, tienen que aprender esto. Today, her daughter-in-law Anna helps her make them. She puts the dough on a griddle called a gomo and flips several times until they are lightly toasted. She places them near the fire so they inflate and become more pliable. Sí, ya me quemé. Eso sí es muy dolido. Rosalia's sons dig the pots out of the pib once the cochinita is ready. The pots are extremely hot, so they have to be careful when removing them. Then the cochinita bibil is ready to serve. The pork is typically served in tacos and topped with pickled red onions. It's become the most famous dish of the Yucatan, with many restaurants in the region serving it. But the way it's made today is far from what Rosalia's ancestors' techniques were. Tortillas are now widely mass-produced, and pre-made achote paste can be found in grocery stores across Mexico. Para mis abuelitos, va, lo, se van a sentir raros si vivieran. Se van a sentir raros porque si les hablan por esas personas, no saben cómo contestar. Rosalia enjoys cooking other traditional dishes too, like relleno negro, a turkey stew typically made to celebrate the Day of the Dead. El relleno negro es más tardado, porque todo el día, en esas horas, ya estuvo ya lo enterraron. Los chiles se quema tres días antes. But she says Maya traditions have been abandoned over the years. Los abuelitos antiguos Ten, dicen, tenemos que separar un cerdito para hacer el día de muertos, para celebrar. Y ahora muchos que no los uh, celebran porque existió otras religiones. 
Even their language has become less popular. Only about a quarter of Maya people in the Yucatan still speak their native tongue. Y mis abuelos, ellos no hablaban el español para nada. Ellos son Maya. Rosalia has been trying to pass her traditions on to her kids, but they are busy with school. Yo le digo, sábado y domingo me tienes que ayudar y allí vas a aprender, poquito a poquito. And at first, only chefs and a handful of curious tourists would visit Rosalia to taste her food. But everything changed when she was featured on the Netflix show Chef's Table Barbecue in 2020. ¿Te gustaría salir en la tele, Mesia? Nunca me lo imaginé, para nada. Si voy a cocinar o si voy a salir en la tele, nunca ni me lo imaginé ni soñarlo. She started hosting cooking demonstrations at her home the same year. Now, she has up to 60 people coming in every week. We let it there burning for around one and a half hours, two hours, until we have only the embers. Y ahora no, ahora viene de todo el mundo. I learned that uh, good food takes time and being obsessed with good ingredients and doing things the traditional way, the results pay off in the end. Realmente te explota la cabeza el saber el proceso de cómo se hace, cómo lo puede vivir uno aquí. Es un orgullo conocer a una persona como ella, la experiencia de con qué sentimiento o emoción lo hace. For Rosalia, making these dishes represents the beauty of her heritage and a way to share it with the world. Ahorita me siento feliz y contenta de todo lo que estoy haciendo de, desde mi cocina, de lo que estoy enseñando. She hopes the next generation will fall in love with cooking the way she has. But for now, she's proud of doing her part to keep Maya traditions alive.